Hi, today we're going to be learning how to find the area and perimeter of complex shapes. Complex shapes are what you get when you combine your basic shapes, that's your squares and triangles and circles and rectangles, into irregular shapes. To find the area of a complex shape, we decompose it into smaller basic shapes and we use the formula that we know to work out the area of the pieces, of the, the smaller pieces that we've broken it up into. So you need to know those formulas. So let's just quickly go through those. So the, the formula to find out the area of a rectangle is length times breadth. To find the area of a square is side times side or side squared. To find the area of a triangle, we take half the base multiplied by the perpendicular height. And to find the area of a circle, we take pi r squared. So that's how we're going to go about finding the area. We're going to break our shape up into smaller pieces Sometimes a complex shape is made by taking a big shape and then cutting a piece out. So we might need to do work with the cut out piece as well to find the area of our complex shape. And we use the formula that we've already learned to help us to work out the areas of those small pieces. And then we use that to help us to work out the area of the complex shape. Then to work out the perimeter of the complex shape, we are going to be working out the, the lengths of all the sides going around the shape and then adding them all up because remember the perimeter is the total distance around the outside of the shape okay so now let's go and have a look at a couple of examples the first one we're going to be doing today is this one over here we've got a 16 centimeter side a 20 centimeter side an unknown length over here 15 centimeters and two sides that are the same length but we don't know what the lengths are so we're going to have to work out the missing lengths first and then we're going to be using that to help us to work out the area and perimeter of the shape. So let's have a look at how we would go about doing this. Right, so starting off over here, let's just take the shape that we've got and work out what the missing lengths are. Okay, so first I've got over here 20 centimeters and this is 15 centimeters. Okay, now because this would be a rectangle like that over there, I can say if this is 20, that must also be 20. So if this is 15, this must be the difference. So it's 20 minus 15, this is going to be 5. So this distance over here is 5 centimeters. And because these are equal, I can say this is also going to be 5 centimeters. Okay, so now I know the lengths of those two sides. They are 5 centimeters each. Then over here, because I know that this is 16 centimeters, if that is 5 centimeters, this must be over here, 16 minus 5 so that means that this must be 11 centimeters so now i know the lengths of all the sides in my shape so now to work out the perimeter of my shape let's do the perimeter first we're going to say perimeter is equal to and we're going to be adding up all the sides i've got side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus side 4 plus side 5 plus side 6. And now we're going to go and fill in all of those lengths. And just as we go around the shape, we can just write the lengths down. So I've got 16 plus, then the next side is 5, plus the next side is 5 as well, plus 15, plus 11. And finally, we close the shape with 20. Okay, so now I'm just going to go and add all of that up. So I've got 16 plus 5 plus 5 plus 15 plus 11 plus 20, and that gives me 72. So that is 72 centimeters because perimeter is measured in just normal units. And in this case, we were working with centimeters. So it's 72 centimeters. So that's what we get for the perimeter of this complex shape. Now let's have a look at the area. Now there are two ways of going about working out the area. The one option is to break this shape up into two pieces like this. Okay, so I've got section A and section B. Now section A, if you look at that, it's 5 by 5, so that is a square, and section B is a rectangle. So what I'm going to do to work out the area is I'm going to take the formula for a square and the formula for a rectangle I'm going to add their areas up. So it's going to be the area of a square is side squared plus the area of a rectangle is length times breadth. Okay, so now I've got 5 times 5 or 5 squared 
plus over here 20 times 11 and that gives us 5 squared plus 20 times 11 is 245 and that's centimeters squared so that's one option that is where I take my shape and I split it up into two pieces and I add those two pieces the other option another way of doing it is to take the shape and say what was it before this piece over here was cut out it was a bigger rectangle like that so this is a 16 by 20 centimeter rectangle now I already worked out this was 5 and 5 okay and this was 11 over there so if I work it out this way I can say the big shape so that whole big shape is a minus this shape over here which is b so this is just a different option a different way of doing it okay so that's going to be uh, area equals the area of this rectangle now because these are both rectangles that i'm working with over here i'm going to say length of a times breadth of a breadth of a minus length of b times breadth of b just so that we can differentiate between the two otherwise length times breadth and length times breadth doesn't tell us which rectangle we're working with okay so length of a times breadth of a that is 20 times 16 minus length of b times breadth of b is 15 times 5 Okay, and now if we work this out, 20 times 16 minus 15 times 5, that gives us 245 as well, centimeters squared. So either way, I'll get the same result. Okay, so this is just two different ways of working out the same thing. I can either split my shape up into two sections and add them up, or I can look at it as a big shape that has had a piece cut out and work out the big shape and work out the cutout and subtract them. So that's just two different ways of working out the same area. Okay, so that's our first example. The next example we're going to be doing is this one over here. In this example, we have got a rectangle over there which has had two half circles cut out of it. Okay, so let's have a look at what we're going to do with this example. So first of all, let's go and fill in all the links that we already know but aren't written on here. So if this is 50, that means that this is also 50. If this is 2, then this is also 2, and this is also 2, and this is also 2, because they told me that those are equal. Okay, then these distances over here, these dotted lines, are, are not actually part of the shape. They're not sides of the shape. What we're going to need to include in the perimeter of the shape is this half circle over here, and the same thing on this side, this half circle over here. But in order to work out that perimeter, that distance, we need to use the radius or the diameter of the circle. Now they've told us over here, by putting this dot over here, that this is the center of that circle, which means that this is the diameter, okay? So I can work out that diameter by saying, I know that this distance is 20. If I take these, two twos away from the 20 that'll give me the diameter of this half circle so that's going to be 20 minus 2 minus 2 is 16 so the diameter of the half circle is 16 and if i need to know the radius of that half circle it will be half of 16 which is 8 so that's 8 and that is 8 and the same thing is on this side over here because it's also 2 and 2 so that's exactly the same as this side that means that this diameter will also be 16 and the radii will each be 8. Okay so now I know all of the measurements that I'm going to need to help me to work out the, perim the perimeter of this shape. So to work out the perimeter of the shape I'm going to start off there are two ways of doing it. I can write each of them separately I can say side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus that half circle plus side 4 plus side 5 plus side 6 plus that half circle so that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to combine the, the lengths that are the same. So I can say, how many 50s are there? There are two sides that are 50. So I can say two times side one and make the 50 centimeter side, side one. 
plus how many sides are there that there are, that are two? There's one, two, three, four. So that's four times side two, which are each two centimeters, plus these half circles. Now there are two identical half circles. So I can multiply the, the distance around the half circle by two. So it's going to be two times because there are two of them. Then it's half of a circle, half of the perimeter of a circle. Now it's going to be half and then in maths remember of is the same as multiplication so it's half of and then the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r or pi times diameter okay so now what i'm going to do is if you look over here the half and the two i can cancel out that and that because this is actually two over one I'm multiplying, I can cancel out the numerator and the denominator because they're the same. So I don't have any fractions to worry about now. So I've actually just got 2 times S1, side 1, which is 50. So it's 2 times 50 plus 4 times 2 plus, and then these cancel. So I've just got 2 pi, and then the radius of the circle, of each half circle, is 8. So it's 2 pi times 8. And now I'm going to use my calculator to work that out. So I've got 2 times 50 plus 4 times 2 plus 2 pi times 8. And that gives us 158, 27. And that is centimeters. So that is one way of doing it. Like I said, you could have done it the long way of writing it all out separately. So perimeter is side 1, plus side 2, plus side 3, so that's side 1, plus side 2, plus side 3, and then we've got a half circle, so half of the perimeter, so that's 2 pi r, plus side 4, plus side 5, plus side 6, plus again a half circle, so half of the perimeter of a circle, 2 pi r. And now we're going to go and fill in everything, so 2 plus 50 plus 2, plus this over here again just like it did over there the twos i can cancel i can say this two and that two cancel each other out and the same thing over here this two and that two cancel each other out so i've just got pi times the radius so pi times eight plus two plus fifty plus two plus again the twos cancel and i'm left with pi times the radius which is also eight Okay, and when I work that all out, I will get the exact same answer. So it's also going to be 158.27 centimeters. So there are two different ways of doing it. The one way is to just work your way around the shape and add up all the sides as you go. The other way is to look for uh, sides that are the same length and combine them so that you don't have to write so much, you don't have to type so much into the calculator. Both of them have pros and cons. This method is better in terms of the fact that you are less likely to make mistakes typing it into your calculator because you have less to type in, okay? This method, you're more likely to make mistakes typing it into the calculator. But this method, you're more likely to make mistakes by leaving sides out. So you need to be very careful if you use this method that you make sure that you include every single length of every single side because you're not just going around the shape, so you might skip things out. You need to be very, very careful that you include every single length around that shape. Okay, so that's the two methods of working out the perimeter. Now, the area. Now, in this case over here, I can't work out three different things and add them together because that's not how the shape is made up. This shape is made up of a rectangle that has had two half circles cut out of it, and there's no other way of doing it. So I'm not going to be doing two options for this. I'm just going to be doing the area is the rectangle, which is length times breadth, minus, and then I can say minus that half circle and then minus that half circle. Or I can say because they are the same, I can do the same thing that I did over there. I can say minus two times a half circle. So minus two half circles, okay? Half of the area of a circle is half times, the area of a circle is pi r squared, so pi r squared. Okay, now once again, these twos can cancel out over here. So I can say 
that and that cancels, and I don't have to worry about any fractions. That won't always happen. In this example, it does happen. Okay, so now let's have a look at our length times breadth for our rectangle. The length is 50, the breadth is 20. So 50 times 20 minus. These cancelled, so I've just got pi times the radius of the circle we already worked out was 8. So times 8 squared. Now if you think about it, what I'm doing here is I'm subtracting, this is just the area of one circle. Here I've got two halves, they make a whole. So I am actually just subtracting one circle area over here as well. Okay, so I've got 50 times 20 minus pi times 8 squared. And that gives us 798.94. When we round that off to two decimal places, we get 0.94. And that is centimeters squared. So that's what we should get for that example. Okay, so just a reminder, when you're doing the perimeter, sometimes there will be lengths of sides that are the same as each other. And you can combine them and just multiply by the number of them that they are. Or you can just work your way around the shape and add them up as you go. Okay, so there, there are two approaches. Just be careful whichever one you do it. If you do this way, make sure you don't leave any of the sides out. And if you do this way, make sure that you type it into your calculator correctly. And then with your area, you can also, if there are things that are the same like that, you can also multiply by how many of them there are as well, just like we did over here. Right, so that is how we do those two examples. Now you're going to do a couple for yourself. The first one you're going to do is... Question A, you have got this shape over here. You need to work out the area and the perimeter of the shape. And if necessary, we'll round it off to two decimal places. I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out. Okay, so let's go through that. So first of all, let's just, let's just go and fill in the lengths of the sides that we can work out over here. So I know that this is 12, so that means this is also 12. I know that this is 25, that means that this all of this must be 25 as well. Here they told me this is 10 and these are equal, so that means that this is also 10. So if this is 10 and that is 10 and this whole thing is 25, then this must be 25 minus 10 minus 10, that gives me 5. So this length over here must be 5. They've also told me this is 3 and this is equal to it, so this must also be 3 over there. Okay, so now I've got all the lengths that were not filled in. I've now filled them in. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we need to work out the perimeter of this shape. Right, so the perimeter is going to be 
I'm just for this one I'm just going to go around the shape because there aren't too many that are the same as each other so I'm just going to go and work my way around so I'll start over here and I'll go five so that's one two there's side one plus side two plus side three plus side four plus side five plus side six plus side seven plus side eight okay now let's go and fill all of them in so i'm going to start with my five plus three plus ten plus three plus another ten plus twelve plus twenty five plus twelve okay and now we can go and type it all in and work it out so that's five plus three plus ten plus three plus 10 plus 12 plus 25 plus 12 and that gives us 80. So you should have got for the perimeter 80 millimeters. Okay now the area. Now there are two ways of doing the area but there is one way in this example that works that makes a little bit more sense to do. Okay so I can either divide it up into three shapes by cutting that and cutting that and then working out that one and that one and that one or i could divide it into shapes by doing that and that and cut and working out this one and this one and this one but either of those methods require working out three areas and adding them together there's a quicker way of doing it and that is to take the whole shape and work out the area of the whole shape and work out the area of the cutout piece and subtract them because then i'm only having to work out two areas and i'm subtracting but if you did the addition method, that is fine as well. Okay, so in this case, I'm going to do the subtraction method. So I'm going to call this the big shape A and the cutout piece B. So I'm going to say the area of A minus the area of B. So that's length of A times breadth of A minus length of B times breadth of B. That gives me, for A, I've got 25 times 12. minus for b i've got 10 times 3. okay so now we can go and work that out so 25 times 12 minus 10 times 3 gives us 270 millimeters squared but as i said you could have worked that out by working out this piece and that piece and this whole piece and adding them together or working out this piece and this piece and this whole piece over here and working it and adding it all together doesn't matter you would still get the same result of 270 millimeters squared okay so that is question a question B is a little bit different here you have got a half circle okay you need to work out the area and perimeter of this half circle I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out
Okay, so let's go through that example and see what you need to do. So first of all, in this example, I've got a half circle. To work out the perimeter, you need to understand or recognize that you've got the distance around the half circle, and you've also got this length over here that you need to add. So the perimeter, remember, is the total distance around the outside of the shape. So that's the half circle plus the straight line. So our perimeter is going to be, I can call this the side one, or you can call it diameter if you want. Okay, so side one plus, then a half circle is half of, half times, the perimeter of a circle is 2 pi r. So that's going to be half times 2, the 2's cancel like that. And I can fill in. So this distance over here is 6, that's my straight side. Plus half or pi times the radius. Now the radius is half of 6, which is 3. So it's just 6 times pi, or 6 plus pi times 3. 6 plus pi times 3 gives us 15.42 centimeters for our perimeter. Then the area. Now the area, I don't have to add anything extra. It is just a half circle, okay? So it's going to be the area of a half times pi r squared. So it's half of a circle, okay? So let's just fill that in quickly. It's half times pi times the radius, which is 3 squared. Okay, so 0.5 or half times pi times 3 squared gives us 14.14. .14. centimeters squared and that's what we should have got for that example right question c here we have got a shape again that you need to work out the area and the perimeter for the shape and i'm going to give you two minutes for this example as well Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, let's go and fill in what we can work out about the, the missing links in this diagram over here. The only distance that we've actually been given is this 15 meters over here. Now, what we can do though, is they've told us that these are all equal to each other. So let's see this one, and this one, and this one, and this one, and this one should all add up to 15. Okay, and they're all equal, which means I can see how many are there. There's one, two, three, four, five equal pieces 
that add up to 15. So to work out the length of each one, I'm going to take that 15, I'm going to divide it by 5, because that will give me the length of each equal piece. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. So that means that each of these is 3. Okay, now if each of those is 3, it means that each of these is also 3, because they're also equal. And if these are all three, there's one, two, three, four, five of them, they should add up to this length over here. So five threes also gives me 15. So what you should have found is that the lengths of all of these sides, all of the short ones are three. They're all equal to each other, so they're all going to be three. And then this is 15 as well, which makes it the same as that side over here. So this, that's all the missing lengths that we didn't, that we weren't given. Now we're going to go and use that to help us to work out the area and perimeter. So first let's do the perimeter. So in this case, I'm going to use the method where I'm going to see, just take all the lengths that are the same as each other and multiply them by the number of them that they are. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 sides that are all 3, cent or three meters. And then I've got two that are 15 each. So I'm going to say 10 times side 1. I'll make the 3, cent, the three meter sides side 1. Plus 2 times side 2. Okay, so that gives me 10 times 3. Plus 2 times 15. Okay. So 10 times 3 plus 2 times 15 gives me 60. So my perimeter is 60 meters. Now you could have added them all up together. You could have said 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3, 10 times, plus 15 plus 15. It would also have given you 60 so long as you didn't leave anything out while you were typing into your calculator or writing it down. Okay, so that's what we should get for the perimeter. Now let's have a look at the area. Now, just like there was with the last example, there, there is more than one way of doing this. You can work it out by taking your shape over here and splitting it up into rectangles like this. That way, all going this way if you want to. Okay, we'd come to the same thing. And working out the area of all the rectangles and adding them up. Or you can work out this area and work out all of those and subtract them, but that doesn't really make sense in this example. But the method I'm going to use today is actually I'm still splitting it up into smaller pieces, but I'm not going to do it into rectangles like this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split it up into squares. So I'm going to start off the same like I did in that other one over there, into rectangles, but then I'm going to do this as well. Because if you look at these, every single one of these blocks that I've now drawn over here is a three by three square. So I have got all of my shapes are identical to each other, so I can just work out the area of one square and multiply it by the number of squares that they are. So there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 identical little squares that make up this shape. So I'm going to work out 15 multiplied by the area of a square for my area. So 15 times side squared for all of those squares over there. So that's going to be 15 times the side of each square is 3. So it's 3 squared. So that is 15 times 3 squared, which is 135. And that is meters squared. So that's what you should have got for question C. Now, as I said, this is not the only method. You, might, you may well have done it a different way. You might have divided, divided up into rectangles that you uh, worked out the areas of each rectangle and added them up. That's fine as well. Okay, so that's question C. Question D looks like this. Here we have got two triangles that have been put together and you need to work out the area and perimeter of this shape a b c d in order to do that you are going to need to use the pythagorean theorem okay and i'm going to give you three minutes to work on this question
Okay, so let's go through that example. So first of all, like I said, you had to use the Pythagorean theorem to work out the missing lengths over here. So we're going to start off by looking where we know more. We know more in triangle ABD. We know these two sides. So we can use them to work out the length of BD. And then we can use that to work out the length of BC in triangle BCD. Okay, so over here, in triangle ABD first, I'm going to work out the length of BD. BD squared equals 25 squared, the hypotenuse squared minus 15 squared. Because if I add these two together, I should get that. Okay, and my reason is the Pythagorean theorem in triangle ABD. with angle ABD equal to 90 degrees. Okay, now we can go and work that out. So that works out to 25 squared minus 15 squared is 400. So therefore BD is the square root of 400, which is 20. And that is 20 meters, okay. So now I know this length over here is 20 meters. Now I can use these two to work out the length of BC over there, right? So BC squared, it's the hypotenuse in that one, so I'm going to be adding these two sides. So it's 21 squared plus 20 squared. And my reason that I can say that is because of the Pythagorean theorem in triangle BCD. with angle BDC equal to 90 degrees, 90 degrees. Okay, so now let's go and work that out. So 21 squared plus 20 squared, that gives us 841. Then the square root of that is 29. So BC is equal to 29. Okay, so now we know what the length of this side over here is. This is 29 meters. Okay, so now we can go and work out what they asked us for, which was the perimeter. The perimeter is what we get when we add up all the sides around the outside, all the, all the distances around the outside of the shape. So I've got side 1 plus side 2 plus side 3 plus side 4. So that's going to be 21 plus 29 plus 15 plus 25. When you add all of that up, you should get 90. And that is 90 meters for our perimeter. Right, so that's what you should have got for the perimeter. Now let's go and work out the area. Now the area, this has already been divided up into the two shapes for us. So we're going to be working out over here the area of this triangle and the area of that triangle and adding them together. So it's going to be half base of A times the perpendicular height of A plus half the base of B times the perpendicular height of B. Okay, so A my base is going to be 15, my height is going to be 20, or the other way around, it doesn't matter. So that's 15 times 20 plus half, then for B, it's 21 and 20. Okay, so once I've got that, I can then go and work it out. So half times 15 times 20 plus half times 21 times 20 and that gives us 360 meters squared. So that's what we should have got for question D. Okay, now let's go and have a look at a different kind of question. This one over here. Here you've been given a shape where you have to work out the area of the shaded section in this diagram. Okay, now they haven't asked you to work out the perimeter. You've only been asked to work out the area in this example. We just have to work out the shaded area. So let's have a look at how we would do this. Okay, so first of all, let's just get our diagram over here. 
we have got, you can see over here, this is a quarter circle, okay? They've told us that this distance is 5. Now, they haven't told us anything else, so we can assume then because this is a quarter circle, this is also 5. That must be the center of our circle over here. So this, if this is 5 centimeters, this must also be 5 centimeters. This is a square, okay, with a quarter circle. Now, like I said, this is the center of our circle. So our circle goes all the way around like that. So this distance from the center to there is the radius of our circle, okay? So what we're going to do is to work out the area, we need to work out the area of the square, and then this quarter circle has been cut out of that square to leave behind this shaded section. So that's what we're working out over here. We need to work out the shaded section. So we're gonna work out the area of the square, and we're going to work out the area of the quarter circle, and we're going to subtract them. Okay, so first, for our area, we're going to work out the area of the square. So it's side squared, because that's how you work out the area of a square. Then we're going to subtract the area of a quarter of a circle. So a quarter of a circle is a quarter times, because remember, of means times. So a quarter times the area of a circle, which is pi r squared. Right, so let's go and fill in. So our sides of our square are 5 by 5. So it's 5 squared minus a quarter times pi times the radius. Now, be careful. This 5 over here is the radius of the circle. It's not the diameter. Even though it looks like it's going all the way across, it's not going all the way across the circle. It's going all the way across the square. That's different. The circle, if we were to finish drawing that circle, this is the center. It would go all the way around like this. Okay? So over here, this is the radius of our circles. The distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. So that's our radius. So our radius is also 5. So it's going to be 5 squared. So we have 5 squared minus a quarter times pi times 5 squared. And that gives us 5.37 if we round that off to two decimal places. And that is centimeters squared. So when you have an example like this, where you've been given a shaded area or where you've been told to work out a section of it, you need to work out everything that makes up. If, it, if this wasn't going to be cut out, what would this whole thing be? It would be a square. So we work out the area of that square. Then we work out the area of the cutout part, the white part, and we subtract it. Okay. So now we're going to go and do a couple that you're going to do for yourself. The first one you're going to do, over here you have got a door with a few windows that have been cut out and the space for a door handle. So you need to work out the area of the shaded section in this diagram. And I'm going to give you two minutes to work this out.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we've got our door. We've been told that this is 100 centimeters and this is 200 centimeters over there. So the total door, if nothing was cut out of this door, would just be 100 by 200. But we have to work out what is left after the windows have been cut out and after the door hole has been cut out over, or the door handle hole has been cut out over there. Right, so first of all, let's work out or let's see how we would work out the area of the whole door. Okay, so I'm going to have length times breadth, and I'll call that A and A for our door. Okay, minus, now all of these, it's 80 by 25. This is also 80 by 25. This is also 80 by 25 and 80 by 25. So these windows are all identical to each other. So I can just minus four of them by multiplying one of them by four. So it's four times the area of one of those windows is length times breadth. And I'm going to call those B. Okay, so I'm calling the door A. And each of these windows will be B. Then I'm going to subtract also the area of this circle over here. Now to work out the area of the circle, it's pi r squared, which means I need to know the radius. So they've told me this distance over there is 10. So the radius is going to be half of 10, which is going to be 5. Right, so let's go and fill in all of our values. So for our door, the length times breadth is 200 times 100. Minus 4 times, because there are 4 windows, and each window is 80 by 25. So 80 times 25 minus the area of our circle is pi r squared. The radius of that circle is 5. So pi times 5 squared. So now let's go and work that out. So I've got 200 times 100 minus 4 times 80 times 25 minus pi times 5 squared. And that gives us 11921, so it's 11,921.46. And that is centimeters squared. So that's what we should have got for question A. Right, then the last one for today, over here we have got a square, okay, which has got all of these pieces that have been cut out and you need to work out the area of that shaded section. Right, so I'm going to give you two minutes for this question as well.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So over here, we have got, like I said already, a square. It's a 70 by 70 square. And the reason I know it's a square is because you can see over here, I've got a quarter circle and a quarter circle. That is the center. That is the center. They're the same as each other. So these are also going to be the same over here. So if this is 70, that must also be 70 because I've got quarter circles, which are all identical to each other like that. Okay. So first of all, you needed to know that this over here is a quarter circle, which means that this is going to be the radius. Half of this distance is the radius of a quarter of each of these quarter circles. So that's going to be 35 millimeters. Okay, now you don't need to fill in all of those, but just so that you're aware, all of these quarter circles have the same radius of 35. Okay. So now what we're going to do is to work out the area. I need to work out the area of the square first. So that's the area is side squared to work out the area of a square minus. Now there are four quarter circles. So four times a quarter of a circle, a quarter of the area of a circle is pi r squared. So pi r squared. Now over here, the four and the quarter, they cancel each other out. Okay. So I don't need to worry about that. So it's actually, if I take four quarter circles and I put them together, what do I get? I get a whole circle. So I'm actually just subtracting a whole circle from this square. Okay, so I've got 70 by 70, so it's 70 squared, minus pi times r squared. Now, the radius of each of these quarter circles, if this is the center of the circle, then this distance is the radius, which is 35. Okay, so the radius is 35. So it's pi times 35 squared. So I've got 70 squared minus pi times 35 squared, and that gives me 1051.54. But if I round that off to two decimal places, I get 0.55. And that is centimeters squared. Millimeters, sorry, millimeters squared. Okay, so you should have got... 1051.55 millimeters squared. And that is how we work out the area and perimeter of complex shapes. Now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson, it's important to practice, practice, practice. If you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video, you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below. The worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.